All right, in this video, we're going to graph a function that has uh, both a horizontal and vertical asymptotes. So um, in this case, we're going to graph the function f of x equals x over x plus 4. And there's a few different things here that I'm going to sort of think about in order to graph this. I'm going to look at domains, uh, vertical and horizontal asymptotes. Uh, we'll figure out, do some limits. Uh, also, we'll look at um, you know, regions of increase and decrease and concavity. So a little bit of everything here. So the first thing is um, we can think about the domain of this function. And you know, for a rational function, the only thing you really want to avoid is dividing by zero. So in this case, I guess sort of the bad value it would be bad if, again, the de denominator did equal 0. And well, that's easy enough to solve. That would give us x equals negative 4. So now we know the domain is going to be all numbers except for negative 4. So we could write that by saying negative infinity to negative 4, again using parentheses, and then negative 4 up to positive infinity. So there's our domain. We'll think about the range of this as well as we go on. Um, but first, you know, notice that x equals negative 4. If you plug in negative 4, again, we said that's going to give you 0 in the denominator. But it gives you, well, just negative 4 in the numerator. And recall if you get something non-zero over 0, what that tells us is uh, that value, in this case, x equals negative 4, that's going to be a vertical asymptote. Okay, so not only does it make the function undefined, but it's sort of a, you know, something a little more special is even going on there. So we'll think about that as well. Um, you know, to figure out the x-intercept, or excuse me, uh, yeah, the x-intercepts. So what we want to do is we want to take our function and set it equal to zero. Okay, so again, you know, when you're finding x-intercepts, uh, the x-intercepts are where y equals zero. So that's what we're going to do for our function here. We'll just take it and set it equal to zero. Well, you can think about this, I guess, in sort of two different ways. Uh, you can think about multiplying, you know, sort of cross-multiplying if you want to. So zero times x plus four is just going to be zero. And then we'll just get one x on the other side. Equivalently, you know, you can just set the numerator immediately equal to zero. So it says the x-intercept is going to be at x equals 0. Well, correspondingly, that's going to be the y-intercept as well in this case. So uh, again, if we find the y-intercept, all we have to do is just plug in x equals 0. And then we would have f of 0 equals 0 over 0 plus 4, which is 0. So OK, so the point 0, 0 is on the graph. Um, we could also think about, I guess, horizontal asymptotes for this function. Okay, so let's think about the horizontal asymptotes, if there are any for this function. And we've kind of seen the shortcut here. But again, to figure out horizontal asymptotes, we just look at the limit as x goes to positive infinity and the limit as x goes to negative infinity. Um, for rational functions, again, though, if there is a, a horizontal asymptote, uh, whatever, it'll be the same on both sides when you compute the limit. So we have x over x plus 4. So we can do the shortcut trick where we recognize the degree of the numerator equals the degree of the denominator. So we can take the ratio of the leading coefficients. Or equivalently, uh, we can kind of do it the long way where we took everything. We took the highest power of x in the denominator, and then we divided everything by that. So we would have x over x, x over x, 4 over x, but x over x, that just equals 1, so x over x is just 1, and 4 over x as x goes to infinity, that's going to go to 0. So we're just going to get the limit as x goes to infinity to be equal to 1, and again, that's going to be the horizontal asymptote. You know, if you did the same thing as x goes to negative infinity, you would have the exact same function, clearly. You could do the exact same, you know, algebra. Um, eventually, again, this would simplify to just 1 over 1 plus 4 over x, so same thing. Well, again, as x goes to negative infinity, this term is going to go to 0, so you'll be left with 1 over 1 plus 0, or just 1. So it says we have a horizontal asymptote of y equals 1. So I'm going to go ahead and sketch some of this stuff uh, just before I forget it all. Okay, so we said there was a vertical asymptote. I almost put it in the wrong place. Um, 
there we go. So, so we said the vertical asymptote was at x equals negative 4. Okay, so there's our vertical asymptote. So, da, da, da. so these problems are kind of long. Obviously, a lot of little steps going on. Um, we said it goes through the point 0, 0. And we also said that the line y equals 1 is a horizontal asymptote. Okay, so um, I guess we can think about a couple other things here. So uh, for one thing, since this is a vertical asymptote, we'll either know it'll go up to positive infinity or down to negative infinity on either side. And one way you could figure this out would be just the plot points. Um, again, we can really look at the limit. So our function is x over x plus 4. So in this case, we'll want to know, um, you know, what happens as x approaches negative 4 from the left and what happens as x approaches negative 4 from the right. Okay, so we're taking the limit here. Again, this is where we're going to get infinite limits. Again, we've got a vertical asymptote. And the way that I do these is, you know, I just plug negative 4 in. So, okay, I get negative 4 in the numerator. Um, clearly, we get 0 in the denominator, but this is where I stop and think. I think, well, we're really taking x coordinates a little bit smaller than negative 4. So maybe like, you know, negative 4.1. So if we take negative 4.1 and add it to 4, it's going to be close to 0, but it's still going to be negative. So what this tells me is the top is getting close to negative 4, the bottom is getting close to 0, but it's staying negative. Well, a negative over a negative is a positive. And if we take the number, you know, 4 and divide it by a number close to 0, that's going to get really large. So this limit will equal positive infinity. And then we can just do the exact same thing with the other one. So again, if we plug in negative 4, we get negative 4 in the numerator. Um, if we plug negative 4 into the denominator, again, we get 0. But since it's a little bit bigger than 4, um, this will be a little bit bigger than 0. So now this limit will go to negative infinity. <clears throat> so, let's maybe go ahead and stick that on our graph as well. Where'd you go, little graph? There you are. So, we said negative 4 from the left, it goes up to positive infinity. So, um, I'm just going to sort of, you know, just barely put that in there just to remind myself for the moment. And we said negative 4 from the right, that'll go to negative infinity. Um, so, we can kind of put this down here. <clears throat> All right, so let's do a couple other things. Now let's look at the first and second derivative, maybe to figure out where the function's increasing, decreasing, and then we can also get some concavity out of this. All right, so f of x, again, was x over x plus 4. Well, to take the first derivative, we'll just have to use the quotient rule. So the quotient rule, again, just says we take whatever's in the denominator, multiply it by the derivative of the numerator, and then minus uh, the numerator times the derivative of the denominator, which will just, again, be positive 1, all over the denominator squared. So let's see here. I think if we multiply this out, we would just have x plus 4 minus x, which would just leave us with a 4 in the numerator, and then x plus uh, 4 quantity squared in the denominator. So if we wanted to find critical points of this, okay, so we would do, uh, the first thing is we would try to set the derivative equal to zero, and then we would also try to figure out where the derivative is undefined. Well, there's nothing that's going to make the derivative equal to zero because there's nothing that will produce zero in the numerator. So here we just have no solutions. Um, to figure out what makes the derivative undefined, we could just take the denominator and set that equal to zero. Well, for this to equal 0, we would need 0 on the inside, which means x would have to equal negative 4. So again, technically this is not a critical point because it's not in the domain of our original function here. But we can still do our little uh, increasing and decreasing based on this. And notice, really, no matter what number you plug into the derivative, except for, you know, as long as we leave out negative 4. If I take anything, say, bigger than negative 4, I mean, the top is always positive. The denominator, since you're squaring it, is always positive. So really, it says it's always positive, 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 positive. Um, so it says the function's increasing. Likewise, for, um, you know, when we do the, uh, if we plug in a negative number, 
Um, if we plug in a negative number here, again, it's always going to be positive. So it says, again, our function is always increasing. Okay, so we'll keep that in mind here. We can also think about the concavity of our function. So to get the concavity, we're going to have to look at the second derivative. So let's rewrite the first derivative here. Um, so we had 4 over x plus 4 squared. I'm going to write that as x plus 4 to the negative second. All right, so um, now when we take the second derivative, we can just use the chain rule. So the negative 2 times negative 4 will make negative 8. Then we'll have x plus 4 to the negative third power. If we take the derivative of the inside, well, we'll just get um, a positive 1. So I'm going to rewrite this as negative 8 over x plus 4 cubed. All right, now I'm going to go through the kind of the same argument. I'm going to think, what would make the second derivative equal to 0? Well, nothing. What would make it undefined? Well, negative 4. Um, and now, uh, let's see here. So I think our concavity will change a little bit. So maybe if we take a number bigger than negative 4, let's say 0. Well, if I plug in 0, we'll have negative 8 over 4 cubed. This is going to be a negative over a positive, which will give us a negative, which means the function is concave down over that interval. And if we take a number smaller than negative 4, uh, maybe I'll use negative 10. That'll give us, again, negative 8 on top. Negative 4, or excuse me, uh, negative 10 plus 4 will give us negative 6 cubed. Well, remember a negative cubed is still a negative, so this is going to be a negative over a negative, which will make positive, which makes it concave up over that interval. So I think we've almost got um, everything that we need. <clears throat> One other thing you may ask yourself is, does the, you know, does the function ever actually cross the asymptote? And to figure that out, what we can do is we can just take the function, x over x plus 4, and well, we're trying to figure out where the y value equals 1, if that ever happens. So we can solve this equation as well. And to do this, we could cross multiply. So we would have x equals x plus 4. But hey, if we subtract x, we get 0 equals 4. And that clearly doesn't happen. And that just means that this equation has no solutions. And in terms of our graph here, it just means that it never crosses It never crosses the uh, line y equals 1. It never crosses that horizontal asymptote. But again, it can. All right, so I guess let's put it all together here. So we said the function um, was always increasing, concave up and then concave down. Well, for this function to always be um, increasing and to be concave up and to have this line as an asymptote, it would just have to kind of stay right above here. So. That's sort of the, the left side. I think, uh, hopefully, I can make the right side here happen. Uh, so, you know, for the function, again, to, you know, have this asymptote go down to negative infinity, um, it's got to go through the point 0, 0. We know it never crosses the x-axis again because, again, we only found one x-intercept. Um, and it's always strictly increasing, so I know it can't, again, it can't cross the line y equals 1. And, again, we algebraically showed that. So this should be concave down, so let me try to make it concave down and go through that point. Hey, I think that looks pretty good. So um, that would be a rough sketch of our function, x over x plus 4. So a lot of little things here. Um, you know, thinking about domain, uh, you're thinking about horizontal and vertical asymptotes, x-intercepts, y-intercepts region of increase and decrease, and then lastly, um, you know, I think the last thing you might want to think about is also finding the concavity.